Hello everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello. And Lycan. Hello there everyone. And last but not least, Silver Quill. Will someone please explain the hippie movement to me? I got no idea, my <laughs> friend. We can we can blame Richard Nixon for that. <laughs> and you can blame me because I I have said it's cool if we roll our arms. Right. Uh, oh my God! And for and for rolling the arms uh, today, we are going to be reviewing the third of the micro series. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, the third of the micro series, uh, which is uh, best ponies, best pony, because best ponies, best pony, best pony, best pony. This <laughs> James Cork has found an, an error. Please try to reboot it and try again. Uh, basically, what you're saying and he's saying is still rolling his arms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to review the Rarity Micro. Sorry, Rarity Micro. Ah, ah, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. That, that's the key word. You just woke me up. Uh, uh, sorry, guys. Okay. You can say that I am that I'm biased towards this one, but mm. oh my god. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be reviewing the Rarity Micro, uh, written by. Andy Price and Katie Cook, uh, uh, written by uh, Katie Cook and drawn by Andy Price. I'm already derping. This is amazing. Yeah. And my gosh, I don't know where to start with this one. Uh, we can right away say that for this story, this wasn't the original uh, idea for it. Oh, really? No, that I do not know. Yes, yes, it wasn't. The original premise for the Rarity Micro was Rarity Takes Manhattan, actually. Oh, really? No. Was it? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it was. Uh, according to Katie Cook, uh, she sent the premise to Hasbro. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, you see, that one is too close to one of the episodes that we're doing for season four. Oh. Uh, you're going to have to rewrite it and, and send us something else. And she went like, okay, no problem. And then she sent the new synopsis, and that's the one that we got in the comics. Huh. Nice. She wasn't, she wasn't allowed to say that. She dropped that piece of knowledge uh, in last year's San Diego Comic-Con, in, the, in the 2013 San Diego Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she said she couldn't talk about it because season four wasn't out yet. Mm-hmm. So when it finally was out, she said, yeah, this week's episode, this is the one that I sent to Hasbro. But they said, nope, we're doing this. <laughs> First dips, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, what is this comic's premise, you may ask? Well, uh, Rarity is so stressed as after doing one of her fashion lines that she decides to take a leave and go to the countryside to relax. Problem is that she ends up going into a hippie colony <laughs> where she discovers that manual labor might not be the best source of stress relief. However, she quickly realizes that the manual labor that she's been doing and in the farm has actually been producing some of the best beauty products that she has ever tested in her life. So she discovers that the hippies need her help in order to keep the farm going, or else the Flim Flam brothers, <laughs> I hate those guys, are going to take over the farm and they're going to, uh, uh, they're going to like join forces with Filthy Rich, apparently. Uh, that part isn't completely explained, but here comes Rarity to save the day and get the farm out of the dumps, and hey, her uh, her marketing techniques and her, her business model works out to the point that they actually, that the hippies actually become more popular than Rarity. <laughs> but everybody's happy, the situation is solved, and Rarity proves to be best pony once again, because she's the, she's Best pony and best ponies, best pony, best pony, best pony. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and there you go. Fun fact about this comic, in a fandom point of view, Chef Sandy from Bronyville changed favorite pony because of this comic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? It's yep. because it's a good comic, isn't it? <laughs> yep, 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 yep. I almost changed mine. Like this comic is good. And yet this comic also made me give up on the idea of spike and rarity. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Uh, because actually, no. of me- not, oh. Well, maybe not this comic, but the two-page mini story that uh, came after. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> which oh is my not, god! Yes. Which is not included in the uh, collection book for some oh, reason. Really? No. Maybe yeah, the short that. stories. The short stories were left out of the collection. Oh. I think. That's why I don't have it and haven't read it. Hmm. Curiosity, but it's a it's a fascinating. Uh, it it kind of embodies. 
everything IDW does right and everything Spike does wrong. <laughs> okay, okay. I must admit, at first I did not like the comic. Oh, really, no? Yeah. Uh, I just found it too detached from rarity. I just couldn't get into it initially. And then when I, as I kept reading and getting into it, I was like, huh, it's actually something that would actually happen. Hmm. I think I felt the same way before, but seeing like how I knew the ending and how I knew the whole story, it didn't bother me that much. Like what you said to me, this is an awesome book um, or a comic and it has a lot of morals and lesson to be learned here. Like, yeah, it's all corporate near the end, but because of those reasonings and how things are work, we kind of understand, Oh, um, certain things need to cost more because of certain things that happen because of how things are made. That's why a bottle of their cream, which they sell for four bucks, they have to sell it at 80 just because they need to make a profit. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a it's, fantastic it, it, example of quality over quantity. It's a great what message, they, and um, I'm glad that they uh, highlighted that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What they are doing is basically what every single artist has to do sooner or later. Mm-hmm. In that, uh, they, they are afraid of raising the prices because they think that's going to take business, business away uh, mm-hmm. because they cannot tell the worth of what they are producing. I actually no, – I, I was – very attached to rarity during the entire comic because, um, of course, it's my favorite and all that. But I was also very attached to the hippies because it's like these guys are really good at something, but they are afraid of like overpricing it because they don't want to scare the clients away. They don't want to. They don't want to lose business. But rarity is there to give them confidence to tell them, no, no, darling, your your products are amazing. Like this will go way more expensive in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Like, if you put them this price, they're going to be way cheaper than what they are selling over there. Mm-hmm. You, you will have enough money to to save the farm. And it's like it, it takes an outsider to help them see that they are actually not overpricing. They are underpricing. Mm-hmm. It's so good, and that that's rarity is doing right there. True, true. Oh, yeah, that outlines the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Oh, true, true. I mean, initially, when you think about it, they were actually selling from their little stand on the side of the road. Oh, and yeah. it took Rarity to come along and say, all right, pack up all your stuff. We're going to can a lot. We're going to charge 80 bits for this. And, yeah, so um, that's what she actually brought to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, talking mm-hmm. about price, I remember a show. Um, it's a cooking show or a show about food. And the, one of the chef, he's a professional. He goes to kitchens that are broken down and help them get back up to business. Are you talking about kitchen? Are you talking about kitchen nightmares with Gordon Ramsay? No, no. Um, it, remember, remember, it's kitchen impossible. But anywho, um, what I remember was he said this: How much is this? Like basically, how much it was this made for? Um, technically five bucks. Now you need to times three that just to make a profit. So knowing that and comparing to this, it does make sense. But anywho, um, Silver, what about you? You haven't talked much. Well, I kind of want to go start to finish on this comic. Ah, uh, all right. So because Rarity is such an interesting character. When the show started, I thought, okay, I'm going to tolerate her. <laughs> because mm. in, in any other show, she would be a bad guy. Mm, true. Yes. She's, yes. She's prim, proper, obsessed with fashion, and somehow people get a lot of writers think, okay, that's the qualities of a bad person or pony. So, but no, Rarity went has won over a lot of the fandom just by being showing you can be feminine and like uh, clothing and fashion and looking pretty and still be, you know, that is a, that is a good choice. If that's who you want to be, there's nothing wrong with that. And she won me over because I thought, oh, God, an episode about dresses suited for success. <laughs> I'm going to be bored of my mind. No, it's a story about a stressed out uh, worker dealing with difficult clients. Oh, my sister, how are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah Re- wasn't that, that, was, that was the moment where you realize, oh, God, you're so relatable. <laughs> And Rarity just continues to uh, win me over. For, for a brief period, she she almost surplanted Twilight in my top three. Uh, mostly because poor Twilight didn't get to do much during season four. Mm-hmm. But uh, but then Twilight's Kingdom kind of got her back in on top just barely. <laughs> but Rarity Rarity is 
one of my favorite characters, and this comic is my favorite of the micros. Oh, true, true. <laughs> it is. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it up is down, left is right, black is white, and man dies at a zebra crossing. <laughs> I mean, Cook, Cook and Price are this great combo, combo for slice of life. The artwork is so beautiful and crisp. They throw in so many background jokes. This is the comic that introduced uh, Sweet Cream Scoops, <laughs> Big Macintosh's stalker. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. In the same yes. panel, in the same panel where Fluttershy is facing the two wild and crazy guys from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> oh, and God. once, and once again, the comics add real characters to Equestria with uh, flax seed and wheat and wheatgrass <laughs> and all the hippie ponies that go with it, which they were probably, the, they're probably the best and most fun characters that IDW has introduced in the entire comic line. Like, I totally agree. Whoa, they have a anchor. poster of Celestia, they have a poster of Celestia Superstar in the background of their house. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is, that is priceless. Oh my God. <laughs> And on, on the talk you guys say about Rarity introducing capitalism, a lot of people fault this comic for that, that Rarity is enlightening the ignorant hi hippies. And yet there's a line that I think counters that argument where Rarity says, first and foremost, we will never compromise the integrity of your product. Mm -hmm. It will remain all natural. And she streamlines it so that the ponies are not battling uphill. This is not converting them to pure capitalism. Because that would involve, you know, doing things cheap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is her bringing common sense to their morals and following yep. best practices. And it's part of the reason I don't get the hippie movement is that they never seem, I can't really say what they accomplished. <laughs> this seems to be the compromise. You get something done, but you don't let go of what your core values. It's kind of funny how people very easily throw the word capitalism and they don't even care about checking the meaning. <laughs> they they just go ahead and say, ah, oh, capitalism. And I'm like, no, that's not capitalism. You have no idea what you're talking about. If anything, Rarity knows where the quality of the product comes from. It comes from the fact that it's all natural made, that it doesn't have uh, additives or whatever. So it's the first thing she says. It's not it's like with the winter rubber baby said that oh bureaucracy is better than anything else. No, it's not. It's just organization skills. Any common any person with common sense has those. It's not bureaucracy. And the thing is when I look at this, it's basically doing things the streamlined way. As like you said with this one. You have a product. You need to sell it off, but the way you're doing it is not getting you any profit. It's making you lose profit. So how does one make profit? Like, okay, we do this, we do that, and change this and change that. But in essence, the whole product itself has not been changed. It's the marketing strategy that's changed. It's also the fact that um, Rarity learns to speak their language. Hmm. So throughout... She learns what a hammer is. Yeah, she learns what a hammer is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Oh, it's the nail thingy that you... That, uh, Apple Jack Juicy say has one like those. <laughs> So you can actually see them disjointed at the beginning, and then as the comic goes along, Rarity learns to be like, oh, I can appreciate their ways and, and their methods and their styles, and actually tries to incorporate that into her message that she puts back to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rarity is a character that she always starts with um, uh, with a flaw, be it being uh, she's self-centered, she wants to... Uh, get someone's someone else's attention. She wants to get the attention for herself, mm -hmm. but but then throughout the story, and usually with a lot of losing her pretty looks, because let's face it, there is there is nothing more enjoyable than seeing Rarity covered in mud from head to hoof. Okay, mm. um, <laughs> she she ends up learning her lesson, and that's that's the best part is that she learns her lesson, but she learns it by working towards it. Mm -hmm. she, she's not like they don't force it upon her. She she drives herself into it mm -hmm. in like, oh, I didn't know that you actually had to suffer for... Like She's like, I, I know that you have to suffer for your looks, but I didn't ever see it like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, like she, she was doing the beauty products that 
uh, uh, she was getting dirty on and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a good lesson because the thing is, okay, here's an example. We see our mother cook every day, like pasta or rice and whatever it is. She cooks it, but we eat it and we enjoyed it, but we got no idea how it was made. But us learning how it was made and doing it ourselves, we appreciate it even more. And when we taste yes. it, like, eh, it's not the best, but I made this and I know what goes through it. And I appreciate it now. This is a good example of suffering for beauty or suffering for your art or whatever James said just now. And it's also an example of a, a line of comedy that uh, was only just recently expounded upon by a certain pony. Mm -hmm. That a very prim and proper and proud pony is all the more comedic when they uh, become flustered. <laughs> Yes. And, yes. It and, it is. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And the rarity Jimmy wrestling counter is high in this comic. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> it, it so is. From waking up super early to getting uh, covered in uh, in grape juice and all that, oh, it's yeah. just so. Yeah. It's so good. Like uh, I, I have never. I never hide the fact that one of my favorite things is when. When they make the pretty girl all dirty and like uncouth and all that, mm. so anytime reality suffers like that, I enjoy it a lot. Mm. Um, <laughs> but it's like I enjoy it because I know reality is gonna be able to pull through out of that situation. She's like, is that yeah, she's going to get dirty and all that, but she's going to come out be more beautiful than ever because she's going to come out a, a, a better person, better mm. pony in this case. Mm. Yeah, and the ending for this one is poor rarity. Just poor rarity. <laughs> <laughs> I like it how it's not about rarity being beautiful. It's about rarity making them beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's about rarity sacrificing her uh, the, the spotlight for a moment and just giving it to them, even though it kind of it still stings. Mm. <laughs> but but you know what? You know what? The, the the point of the matter is rarity helps someone to get fame or to get their product well known, and in the end, she got what she wanted to begin with, which was sell her clothing and make a buck about it, um, make, make a profit out of it. Like, even the, the line here says, um, you should be happy too. Your fashion show was a complete success. Spike took down so many orders, we ran out of parchment. So, yay for her. Also in the previous panel, they flat out state, you're the best pony. So there, I trust, that debate is I trust that debate is now concluded. <laughs> Although there's a typo there, they, they should have written Fluttershy. <laughs> Where was it again? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, best Pony Wars. <laughs> oh, they, oh, it's on now. <laughs> That's it. Where is my rarity plushie that is bigger than an Xbox 360? I'm oh going to beat you with it. No, it's going to get hurt. Anyway, um, the is Andy Price and Katie Cook, they, their favorite characters to draw... Uh, and to work with are Rarity and Princess Luna. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they have said this. Like Andy Price said that his favorite thing to draw is Princess Luna. And they, of course, they took uh, upon themselves to work on the on both the Rarity Micro and the Princess Luna Micro. Mm -hmm. And it shows. Like, it, th there, is, there is passion, love, care, and attention in every single frame, every single panel, every single picture drawn in this, in, in this comic. In that... The, the facial expressions that they give to Rarity, from when she's super happy, determined to when she's the, the desperate and and like a, a, absolutely angry, like the 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 panel where she's looking at the cows others. Oh my god, <laughs> that is the face of I. Nope. I am tired of this. It's so funny. And you mustn't forget the panel where Applejack is wearing um, the face mask. Oh yeah, with all was... the mud on it. Yeah, well, you know, the, the, the art of the dress with Tara Strong's character in the background. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yes, yes, that's right. We see her. We see we see Tara's OC in there. Yeah, there are a couple that's, of references to Fringe as well. And that's the strength of Cook and Price's work is that they really make a world. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. just you scan the background and sure the background is full of um, uh, references, I'm... pop culture hints, but. It it really makes everything more vibrant. I mean, uh, what was it? The second page of the comic, just where they appear at the after party. There are at least ten things going on in that background. Yeah. You're not 
or in fact the foreground actually mm-hmm. rarity and twilight are in the background yep, but yep. all that stuff is going on and when i look at the other micros they're not i'm not saying they're bad artwork but none of them have that vitality <laughs> they yeah. they sort of draw the bare minimum of characters mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Another thing I yeah need, that that is that is it, that the universe that Andy Price and Katie uh, they 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 work together in it feels alive it, it it like getting through one of their comics takes longer than than with the usual because you can stop in a panel for like five solid minutes just admiring all the detail looking at all the different shout outs see if they put a reference in there reading like when there is. Uh, the the ones that kill me are the ones that take place in a library mm-hmm. because you are likely going to spend 10 minutes reading every <laughs> single one of the book covers mm-hmm. and they will put the titles of the books on the covers on the sides and it, it, it they will have references to everything the same with the with the bar scene <laughs> and and all the other things that the main six are doing and the other background characters are doing it's so it it yeah. it, it, it beams with uh, awesomeness uh, with uh, uh, not not just that, but live. Li- mm. It feels alive. It feels it feels like it could be real. Mm. One mm-hmm. thing one thing I haven't mentioned yet from even the previous comic was the paneling in um, Andy Price and Katie Cook's book. They're really good, especially in this one. When you move on to a page like page number uh, nine, um, one of the panels is literally a peace symbol. And they use that to their advantage. That is so cool. Oh yeah, I love that pay symbol. Mm-hmm. And in the panel where they are being chased by bees, uh, they angle the panel to create a greater sense of motion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Yeah, it's it, it is it is visually stimulating. It catches your eye. It draws you in. And but the best part is that it, it never feels over the top, and it never feels. Uh, oh, like it's lackluster, mm. like lackluster or out of place. It feels right. Like mm. it has the it has the perfect amount of crazy in it, and the, the perfect amount of um, uh, kin- kinetic in it mm-hmm. that it, 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 like it draws you in with its the, the way that it's panel, the way that it's edited, the way that it's put together. Is Please, somebody stop me. I cannot stop saying good things about this comic. No, no. I don't know what is wrong with I, I, I agree with you, James. I agree with you. Like, <laughs> I enjoy this comic, and I don't feel what you're saying is not appropriate. Like, to me, this comic is good in the way that... In, and in every little detail, like paneling, wording, coloring, and lining, it's all those kind of scenes. Like, for example, if you take a look-see at page number 18, the way that um, the panel looks... In a uh, amateur way, this does not work. But somehow they make it work. I'm going off the trade back, so I don't know which is page 18. Uh, oh, it's... it's literally the one where Rarity is teaching them about how to start business, like with flex and wheat, all be- natural beauty kind of deal. Like they're showing oh. the whole group, like gather around every pony. We have a plan on how to save the farm. That scene. Oh, okay. So, if you take a look, see at that. That is already amazing on its own. Mm. And on the previous page, you have the you have rarities. Well, <laughs> rarity. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. Standing, standing, standing there in all the brilliance. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. because this is funny, of course. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. No, I just like no. to comment on the pacing as well. Mm-hmm. At no point yeah. was it too fast. At no point was it too slow. Mm-hmm. It it drew you along. It made you want to read the next panel to see what was going on, what was going to happen. It didn't jump around. It had a very nice flow to it from start to finish. No, I don't agree. Also, may I? Agree. I, I I didn't I didn't say anything about um about the characters, but I have to bring up the characters are so likable. Like the not not just Rarity, who's likable on her own right, but I mean, f- uh, both both hippie ponies that uh, I I forgot their names. God, I want I want to call um, them the real names. Flaxseed and Wheatgrass. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, Flaxseed and Wheatgrass. They are so likable and they are so uh, 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 cool. Like you you root for them because they are good ponies. Oh, true. They have good intentions. They want to save the farm. They want to keep it moving forward. And I'm like, this is so relatable. Like, this is for uh, 
coming from someone who had to do a couple of charity streams in order to save the house from uh, being taken by the by the banks due to mortgage. Mm-hmm. I can totally relate to these guys. <laughs> like, I can see the desperation. I can see their fear. I can see why, like, the, the whole, oh, he's always watching, always watching. That's very funny, but that, that's something that happens in real life. And that feels, it feels so good to have that, that sort of comedic relief. Mm, and, true. um, that, like, it, it, it gets to fuel you to, to say, look, if these stoners could get through it, like, you can. And mm-hmm. they are so, such good characters, mm-hmm. well written, uh, very good designs. Like I was expecting uh, Flax to to uh, annoy me <laughs> because of the whoa, like I yeah. loved using like all the time. But he doesn't get that great. He actually gets really funny. Whoa, anger. <laughs> At no point are they ever portrayed as stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah Flex, is, thing about Flex him. is kind of stupid. <laughs> yeah, he, he has he has that kind of like he has that kind of like he's a mix between uh, the big Lebowski, you know, uh, the dude, mm-hmm. and and Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Mm, to me, he's, I... he's that kind of he's that kind of guy. Yeah, to, to me, I felt more of Shaggy really than the big um, the the um, the Lebowski. One thing to mention about um, what Lycan said about pacing. Um, this book has 31 pages and the Rainbow Dash has 25. And to me, reading Rainbow Dash was, uh, why is this taking so long? The world united in meh. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Should try reading the Fluttish I one. I, uh, oh, don't God. Get started. Don't I don't get want started. to get into, I don't want to get to that one, believe me. I don't want to get to that one. Well, that's the it, next I, micro we're going to cover. So, I, yeah. I, I think, I think that is the one where our positivity is just going to go poof out the window. We'll see. Because, we'll, really, see. <laughs> we'll see, because yeah. I, to me, out of the main six, that's my number three or number four. Yeah, my number four. To me, it's not as bad as Applejack and Rainbow Dash. So, yay. You're, you're going to be so know. alone. You're yeah. so, yeah, there you go. You're oh, going to be so alone. <laughs> but, but with the, with Flexi, I, I, at first I found him kind of grating mm-hmm. just because of the likes and the, you know, he's, he's, at first he is the hippie stereotype. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Stupid, probably on several substances <laughs> that shouldn't be taken alone, let alone mixed. <laughs> but then, but then they come clean about how they're going to lose the farm. And there's this great image. Uh, it's the same page where Rarity talks about suffering for beauty. Mm-hmm. On the very first panel, Wheatgrass is hugging him, and he looks to be consoling her. And for a minute there, he's serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing it now. Then, and then he follows up by calling uh, the Ponyville the suburbs. Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, but for that moment, it's like, okay, there's a character here. He's got quirks, but he is a real character. He's not thrown he's in. Yeah, he's not thrown in just to be the comedic relief. Mm-hmm. Uh, ironically, it's kind of like the snowman from Frozen. You think you're going to hate it. <laughs> uh, but true, he true. wins your hope. Hmm. Although, uh, if, we, if we are in danger of being too positive, then it's time I tackle the one thing that irked me in this comic. Ooh. Or else. Yes, yes, let's, okay. go, let's go for it. Well, first off, I guess Rarity kind of set herself up when Applejack <laughs> recommended the beauty spa. <laughs> Applejack. You know, I, 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 I don't blame Applejack for that one, or I don't blame Rarity for that one. It's like, Rarity, you know what kind of magazines Applejack reads, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, fun fact. The book that Applejack is reading correlates to the special ending that is in the normal book. Exactly right. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. yeah. And he's written like a pony version of the Forbes man- magazine yep, with yep. <laughs> turn up to... yep, yep. Hey, it's truck. a turn up truck. Mm-hmm. So and and since it was not included, which I don't really understand, I guess I need to summarize, mm-hmm. uh, especially for Lycan if you've not read it. Do you remember Hasty Turnip? He was in Sweet and Elite, the hick pony that was cleaning windows. So he's like, "Hey, Rarity, you let, let's run a pretty hat." Yeah. They took. This is what IDW and especially uh, Cook and Price, do so well. They took that one-shot character, who's completely forgettable aside from his hick traits, <laughs> and they made him a sympathetic character who was fleshed out. It turns out that, one, Hayseed has had a crush on Rarity since they were foals. Mm-hmm. He has been working his whole life to be worthy of her. 
<laughs> he founds his own business, uh, gets an office in Canterlot, I believe. And as he is on the cover uh, of the book, Norman pointed out, he has a business suit, <laughs> comb back hair. He's still got the butt teeth, but hey, what you going to do? Mm-hmm. So he goes to, he gets tickets for Rarity's fashion show at the end, brings flowers, is all set to win her over. Spike tells him that she's got a boyfriend. He steals the flowers and his uh, flex as uh, as Hacy leaves in tears. Spike takes the flowers to go make a move on Rarity himself. It, it's six. It's what twelve panels long, two pages, and it tore my heart. I just like I feel so bad for him. Why am I feeling bad for this character? <laughs> 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 I feel so bad for this guy, and I'm loathing Spike right now. Yeah, yeah I so agree. Like, like, <laughs> Spike here right now is the villain of Hayseed's life. Like, he is the one who's um, at every turn trying so hard to ruin his life. And Spike manages to hurt Hayseed, Rarity, and himself with that move because we know, we know that Spike's not going to succeed. At least not in that case. Mm-hmm. And no disrespect to Rarity and Spike fans, the Sparity shippers. This was the conference. Kind of like, you know, Spike would do something like that in the show. <laughs> which kind of says he's not mature enough yet. Uh, it's probably it's probably not a good thing for him to hook up with Rarity. I, I never got fixated on age difference. Mm-hmm. But now's not the time I really can't see this ship happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. And if Spike's actually going to put a, push away potential good matches for rarity, then we, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. That's just in the comic books. And like James always says, comic uh, tier two canon. So <laughs> who knows? Yeah. But, it, yeah, but... but it seems to fit with Spike's character, which is the, which is the concern. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Spike, is, he, has, he has always been very immature. He has always been the, uh, the, the fact that he actually... You know what? I have never seen Spike... Flaunting over uh, rarity when it's not about looks. It, it, it is like I have never seen him admire rarity for what she does or for what she stands for. Not just the the whole, you know. Oh, she looks pretty. She's so beautiful. Oh my god, she's the most beautiful unicorn in the in the planet. I I I cannot wait to hook up with her or something. No, Spike is always about oh, she's so pretty. Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, she's gorgeous. It's never oh, she has such a uh, mind for business or like she's so smart or she's so clever or she's so talented. Look at all these beautiful dresses that she makes and all that. It's like Spike, you do realize that uh, uh, she has a lot more than just looks going on for her, right? <laughs> True. So yeah, in that regard, I think Spike is definitely not mature enough to uh, to be a good match for for right. Not not only because he's still a baby dragon, mm-hmm, guys, but, right. but because he doesn't have the mindset for it. Not yet. He's got to get older. Yeah, he has to get older. Honestly speaking, I'm one of those um, Spike rarity shippers. I, I do enjoy their ship. I've been reading a. F- I'm sorry. There's a Flash comic on DeviantArt. If you guys notice on EQD. And that is a really good story that they have there. And you know what? I do enjoy their ship. Um, am I saying that they should pair up officially? I don't know. If yeah. Hasbro wants to, yeah, I don't mind. Um, would I go against it? No, I'm all for it. But you know what? Whatever they do, I'm okay with it as long as I get a show. The thing is that I think the, the, the relationships in the show are already very well established. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What Rarity and Spike have is more of a friendship than anything else. Mm-hmm. We are definitely divergent from the no, original true, subject true, of true, the comic. Yeah. It's not about parity. <laughs> it's about Rarity being the best pony and Rarity being absolutely <laughs> awesome and uh, her being, being great and perfect and, and just best, 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 best. best. Oh you know, God, James, yeah, right, right, right. on a normal day, I would disagree. But on this comic, I, it, it's hard for me to disagree. <laughs> It is. Yes. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just musing myself. What is going on with this comic? My one of my enjoyable ponies is now favorite comic, and my favorite pony is in my least favorite comic. <laughs> what is this duality? <laughs> oh god! I will say this: I am taking one of those online personality things. Mm-hmm. And do you know what my rarity score was? Um, Zero. Okay. <laughs> 
I have absolutely no connection with Rarity whatsoever. Um, and it is actually quite difficult for me to relate to Rarity. Oh. However, in this comic, it was fantastic. I was able to see her inner turmoil and relate, and I could understand her plight um, fully. So it's that well written that even someone that has almost zero commonalities with Rarity is able to actually enjoy the comic and understand everything about it. It just goes to the credit of the writers and the artists. Mm-hmm. That's true, that's true. Uh, to, be, to be perfectly fair with uh, you and with anyone who uh, likes different characters, uh, when when someone says so-and-so is my favorite character, or like so-and-so is best pony or whatever, it doesn't come from the fact that he is uh, well-written, badly written, or like... Uh, no, it doesn't come from the fa- favoritism. It it comes with who you relate with the most. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, perhaps there's people who relate more with Twilight, so Twilight is their favorite. There are people who relate more with Fluttershy, so Fluttershy is their, fa- their favorite. Um, I relate with Rarity because I am very much like her. I am a dram- I can be a drama queen. I can be self-centered. I can be egotistical. But in the end, I am there to help others, and I am very worried about what people think of my craft and of my uh, of my artwork. Oh, and is- I, I am looking for that uh, that level of approval, but without losing some of my confidence. Mm. So yeah, in the and I was and and that's that's why I. I like Rarity so much because it's easier for me to connect with. Mm, yes. And I'm pretty sure the same goes with uh, with you, Norman, and with well, you, Silver, when you guys like Fluttershy. I don't know how anyone identifies with Rarity. I'm far too humble uh, to identify with Rarity. I am the most humble man in the world. All of you <laughs> must bow <follow laughs> to humbleness. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, for me personally, um, like, like I said before, my favorite pony has been Fluttershy and also Derpy. And the reason why I connect with Fluttershy, well, because I was like that. I, I saw that personality in me before. Like what James says sometimes could be taken, but sometimes it's all about the aesthetic of the pony instead of the personality-wise. Like for toys, I do enjoy Twilight more than Fluttershy because Twilight has this nice um, color of purple mixed with darker purple. I mean, her aesthetics looks really good. And Rainbow Dash, she sells. That's all. And for Fluttershy, she's a heart cell. That's the thing. My favorite, uh, my favorite Pokemon is Lugia. Mm-hmm. And Lugia is white and purple. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rarity, toy wise, Rarity is awesome for me because I love white and purple. And it all comes from the fact that my favorite football team in Spain is Real Madrid, mm-hmm. and the the color of their original equipment was white and purple. <laughs> I have been a fan of that color combination forever. Oh, understandable, understandable. Sometimes, like, like, like. Like I said, it's the aesthetics, and um, what a coincidence! You like the rarity color because, well, it matches with what you like and her personality. Yay! <laughs> yes. But anywho, um, let's move on to what we really like about this comic, like for like the little bits and pieces. Regarding this, I have no complaints about the comic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember Silver was talking about the complaints, that mm-hmm. the one thing that was nagging him. Oh, yeah. I have nothing that nags me about it. Yeah, same here, because I, I have no bad thing to say about it. Like, I enjoy this a lot. Like, like I said, this is my number one. Out of all the main six, this is my number one. And probably out of all the uh, ten they produced, this is my number one. I really liked this one. It had lots of detail... It had great pacing, the characters were fantastic, it's well written, mm-hmm. the art's great. It is 31 pages long, and it does not feel like that at all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it is an absolute joy to read. True that, true that. I don't mind this being a two-parter, really. <laughs> but like like I said before, the story, even though it's 31 pages long, it does not feel like it's dragging itself. And the end... The end makes it perfect because of what Twilight wants to do. Essentially, it's write a letter to Princess Celestia while she's just 40 feet away. You can go talk to her personally. <laughs> uh. And Celestia has a waterfall bathtub. That is <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. I need that in my own house. James, what about you? The things that I like about this comic say... I think I can end, end, end that one very quick and say everything. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I do agree. And Silver, what about you? Well, like I say, Flaxseed and Wheatgrass are probably the strong species. They're great to play off of Rarity and to put her in these uncomfortable situations. <laughs> and then there's the uh, just the visual 
treats that Cook and Price managed to dream up. So that's what makes their stories come alive. But if we have to go into the realm of negativity, because otherwise we're just fanboys, mm-hmm. Rarity, you you hussy in that dress, <laughs> plunging neckline and exposing your plot to the world. Really, oh have you no shame. Oh my, she's <laughs> just, she's found the summer of love herself. Uh, and I have no all, complaints whatsoever. They're always, <laughs> they're always naked. The whole of Equestria is hippies. <laughs> That is true. I, I guess we should go. No, uh, no, we, I'm not going to touch that. Not, not on this show. Not on this show. Maybe if I do another show, yes, but not on this show. Woo! What, you, you, you're going to go nudist on another show? What? Oh God, That's... no, James. Are we going to do uh, 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 an MBS show reviews after dark? I can do that. No, no, no. <laughs> in today's review, in today's episode of uh, the MBS show after dark, we have Atrial. So oh, Atrial, what no. <laughs> is the secret behind your hard work? Ah, oh, God, no. But anywho, James, if we don't have anything, let's end this. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, final verdict. Great comic. Absolutely great comic. One of my favorites. Um, if not my favorite of the micros. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that's uh, that is def- that, 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 that's my opinion. And yeah, I think that was the last one that was left to say, right? True that. Yeah. True that. It plays really well, um, contrasting Rarity's internal turmoil with Flaxseed and Wheatgrass's external turmoil. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. There's one other thing that I don't know if we really got into. The fact that they made Filthy Rich the evil. Well, the guy is going to come in and steamroll their home. Oh, I kind of like Filthy Rich. He seems like a nice guy. He's not a shady businessman. How he raised Diamond Tiara is a mystery. Mm-mm. But but you know, well, I... he didn't. <laughs> don't you see? She's a spoiled brat. I don't think there is no nurture going on there. I think mm. he's just evil by 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 default. But you know what? Yeah. I, I couldn't blame. Um... Who was it again? Filthy? Yeah, I couldn't blame Filthy for what he did because essentially what he was doing was making a business. If you really want to blame someone, blame the Flim Flam. The, the hippies were kind of bamboozled out of the cash by the Flim Flam brothers. True. Yep. Flim and Flam, I got no problem seeing them as a villain. Mm-hmm. Actually, when this comic came out, Flim and Flam had only made their one appearance in the show. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, <laughs> ironically... This is the first thing they were being real swindlers. <laughs> Whereas a lot of people point out they had a genuine product in uh, Super Speedy. Oh, true. Yeah. And... Oh, God. <sighs> is that... I'm sorry. I'm I had no sorry. problem believing that they'd swindle people out of their money in a bad deal. That's, I think that's what they were intended to be. If anything, Super Speedy was a fluke in that they had a genuine product that... I kind of think they they probably stole from someone else. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I, I wanted to go there, but you know what? That's a hit cannon for another day. Yeah, they couldn't be they couldn't be smarter than that. Yeah, I want to discuss this uh, further, but let's let's end this. Let's end yeah. this. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we should do a review of the old episodes, like touching on villains or something. Like that. It's an idea we can play upon. This I will be. Like I will be happy to do that. I will be happy to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but for now, okay, we'll, we should end this. Yeah. Let's end it. Let's end. So that was uh, the our review of <laughs> the rarity, the best ponies, best pony for best ponies, best pony comic, the the, the movie, the motion picture, the game. <laughs> um, uh, that's uh, for today for this week's episode review. Uh, next week we're going to be reviewing, if I'm correctly, we're going to be reviewing the Shannon Arbor Princess oh. Cadence. Uh, nay, everything arc. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-uh. One, one, one of the, one of the, one of the most enjoyable uh, trope destroyers uh, <laughs> high school stories yep, in yep, my yep, yep, yep. own humble opinion. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, hopefully we will be able to have as many people as this time because hey, you have to admit, in this case, the more people, the merrier. Indeed, indeed. Okay, so that's uh, for this week's episode review. I have been James Cork. Like I'm Norman Sanzo. I'm Lacken. And I am the Silver Quill. Whoa. Uh, mm. We'll see you guys. <laughs> wow. Like, we'll see you guys next week. Like, bye. Adios. Like, bye. Bye. Bye.